Name the old guy with the bacon. Oh, the bacon. Hi, and welcome to Game and Read with Aaron and Peter, where twice a month we strive to take a book and a video game and put them together in a way that makes them both even better. In this video, we're going to be talking about youth with special powers. Peter read The Magicians by Lev Grossman. It was published in 2009. When I played Psychonauts on the PS3, and that came out in 2005 by Double Fine Studios. So before we begin discussing how they fit together, we're going to do a quick review of each. I'm going to start. So I read The Magicians by Lev Grossman, as she mentioned earlier, she being Aaron. That's me. <laughs> it is a novel in two, from 2009 about, people like to call it the adult Harry Potter. I wouldn't necessarily call it that. Quick synopsis, uh, there is a college for wizards in the United States. And the main character of the book, Quentin Coldwater, gets accepted to this institution where he learns magic for five years, uh, you know, gets friends and deals with stuff in that amount of time, and then at the end of that college trip goes on a quest that I'm not going into too many details spoilers, about, spoilers. just in case you want to read it. It was a pretty interesting book. Uh, I liked it overall, especially looking back at the whole experience of it. Uh, there were a few points in the middle where I really was kind of starting to lose interest. I was like, what? Where is this going? Am I going to like this too much at the end? And I ended up thinking it was pretty good. I gave it, you know, around a four stars uh, if I were to try and put it into five star numerals. <laughs> um, there were some things that I wasn't a big fan of. I found Quentin to be a very dislikable main character, and that's probably hopefully one of the things Grossman was going for. There, he, he just was always on my nerves. He was that kind of guy who I really couldn't really relate to. He was smart, but also kind of a dick and open about it and didn't really seem interested in like growing from that too much until the very end after some stuff had happened. And I found myself at different times almost rooting for him to have a harder time dealing with stuff just to be like, yeah, learn your lesson. <laughs> and it, it didn't happen too much until the very end. And even then, you know, it was a little late for him to develop that into more actions, hopefully covered in the two sequels, uh, The Magician's Land and The Magician, Magician King, King, both of which are out. And I'll probably get around to reading sometime because I did enjoy the first one enough. They're good books, you should read them. They, they are pretty good books. Uh, if you're really interested in, you know, magic and weird worlds and stuff like that, I would suggest picking it up, giving it a read through, at least trying it out. Aaron, onto your review. So I played Psychonauts on the PS3. The game originally came out in 2005 for the PS2. PS2, Xbox, PC. In 2005. I, first of all, love the art style of this game. Uh, it is funky, it is weird. It reminded me a lot of Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. I got a very Nightmare Before christmas -y vibe uh, from the art, and it's, but it was distinct in its own way. Um, so synopsis of the game, you play as Rasputin, or Raz, uh, and you are a kid who has shown up at this summer camp for psychic kids. Uh, you are not invited to the camp, your dad is coming to get you in two days, and you have to become a Psychonaut. Uh, which is like the C Psych CIA psychic, psychic FBI kind James of thing. James Bond, but with psychics. James Bondy, all that kind of stuff, right? So you have two days to do it, and kids, people do it for their whole lives to train to be psychonauts. So that is your challenge. Um, you find out that someone is stealing the brains of the other children in the camp. I won't say who, uh, because you need to play it and find out for yourself. But you are on a mission to save the brains and save the camp. Uh, like I said, the art was really awesome. I really enjoyed it. I really liked the gameplay, and especially in the beginning, uh, you go through other people's minds to learn how to do stuff. So one of your first powers is punching, psychic punch, <laughs> and you have to run through this obstacle course in one of the character, one of the instructor's minds to learn how to use it. And it walks you through it, but it doesn't feel like a tutorial. It feels like you're playing the game. And that was something I really appreciated. I hate tutorials. 
I, I like hate them. them so much. <laughs> and this didn't feel like one, which was awesome. Um, the levels are really unique too, which is really cool. Uh, you have some levels that you have to fight a lot. You have some levels that are all about maneuvering and finding the right nook and cranny to go into. And you have some levels that are very puzzle based. Um, my favorite level was Black Velvetopia. It's near the end. It is an art and Spain level. So there's this guy, Edgar, and he's trying to win over, um, reach his cup. Blah, 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 blah. He's trying to build a card tower to get to this woman in the sky who is crying and she is sad and this bull keeps running around and knocking his cards down. So you have to go find the queen cards. You fight luchadors to get your cards. So there's a tiger, a snake, an eagle, and a dragon. Um, I thought that level was really clever, really fun, and it inverted the colors so it was like black light, which was even cooler. Um, but I'm saying, oh. And I think the coolest thing about Psychonauts definitely is that all the levels that Aaron was just describing are just in these people's minds. So you yeah. jump into them and you're dealing with like their own neuroses mm -hmm. and psychic issues. Also what I didn't like about the game, I struggled during some points of this game. Peter can attest, I got very, very frustrated in some levels on some parts because there is so much freedom in the sense that you have these powers and the game does not tell you what to do. You have to figure it out. But overall, I did enjoy the game a lot. I had a lot of fun playing it and so I give it four out of five stars. All right. Total of eight out of 10. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now it's time okay. to talk about them together. Let's talk about them together. So we tried to come up with some main themes that we saw them kind of... Sharing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Aaron hadn't played this game before, I hadn't read this book before, and we were both kind of like, they seem to fit together. They both have people learning to do different things. And I think they did fit together pretty well. Oh yeah. Um, the Psychonauts has psychic powers, and Magicians has magic powers. However... Should've brought a wand. They both require the characters to learn how to use those powers. Yeah. And both of them take effort. Uh, Psychonauts, as the player, you have to practice. I mean, you've got powers that are really kind of clunky sometimes, so you have to work on that and practice and get better at them. And I think in The Magicians, they talk a lot about that too. I mean, they're in school yeah. and they have to one, practice. Yeah, one bit from it is <laughs> that they had to learn like five different ancient languages to learn how to do magic. And while they gloss over a lot of the school stuff like that, they mention like, you had to learn like Hebrew and Old mm -hmm. Dutch and all kinds of other stuff. And I'm like, that's crazy. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so both both the book and the game, your, the characters have to learn how to use the powers. And Definitely. it takes a lot of effort and yeah. a lot of concentration. So yeah. kind of Another now. thing we noticed with them uh, was that they both dealt with fairly dark topics mm -hmm. just as a thematic, you know, you as a thematic device. Let's just call it that. Uh, the magicians, they are dealing with depression, kind of feeling forlorn, lost in the world, especially once they're given kind of these crazy powers and figuring out how they want to use them without rules once they're out of college. Yeah. And with Psychonauts, the whole idea is you go into people's minds, the levels that you go into, you have to defeat things in those minds that are depression, anxiety, frustration, trauma, trauma uh, grudges. I mean, these emotions that are not happy. None of yeah. these levels are particularly yeah. happy. Especially in Psychonauts, you find these little booklets in there where it's like yeah. whoever's brain you're in, it's like part Memories. of their story. Mm -hmm. Oh man, so a couple of those are like, ugh, yeah. okay. <laughs> but the thing about Psychonauts is that it deals with those disturbing themes and those deep emotions in a humorous way. This is a funny game. There's a lot of funny dialogue, there's a lot of funny visuals in the level, and so they take this really heavy, dark, kind of disturbing stuff, and think that they deal with it with humor, yeah. and a way to see, you know, you're feeling like this, but there's a way over it, and it 
you can laugh. Yeah. It's okay to still laugh yeah. about it. They also exist in a world in which they can like cure these issues by going into these people's brains and punching yeah. them, basically. So it it's a slightly different reality than yeah. like, you know. <laughs> Real reality? Yeah, like actual psychiatry. <laughs> Where it's dealing with people who yeah. have these concerns and you can't just go in there and literally fight them. That so would be I, awesome. I think, you know, humor is inherently a little bit part of doing something that out of what we can actually do. Yeah. There wasn't, and I guess going on humor mm -hmm. uh, in The Magicians, they, they definitely made a lot of quips back and forth to each other. Most of them were kind of snarky. I don't remember laughing too much. There are a few points that were like humorous and enjoyable and like, oh, everybody is actually having a good time for once. That makes me smile there, instead of, huh? There aren't really a lot of LOL moments in The Magicians. No, and it's maybe- Kind maybe, of a heavy book. I think that's one of the things that kind of made me down on it a little bit in the middle, because it wasn't super exciting. There wasn't, you know, a lot of humor, and it was just kind of like going through step by step what's happening. It was more life. I feel like The Magicians had more yeah. of, a, of a life, uh, this is life is sucky sometimes. I feel like that that was Definitely. really the magicians. Love Grossman really drew on that about you know, yeah. it's not all happy, exciting, funny. It's life. Mm. Well, the the kids in like the psychic camp, they're all kind of training to eventually maybe become like these psychic oh, special agents. Yeah. Whereas in the magicians, they kind of come up with it several times that once you get out of the school they go to there's no set plan it's not really a secret world in the same way that mm -hmm. like harry potter had mm -hmm. one where it's like you know you can go live in one of the wizard towns and do wizardy stuff there or whatever it was kind of you had to find your own thing and then just kind of do that until you die and i think that's an interesting take on kind of jumping out of like oh what would wizards do in a real life uh if they didn't have anything to really strive for if they just had magic for everything mm -hmm. and I, I like that part a lot even though it was kind of depressing to read about one other thing that is present in both the book and the game is that the supportive characters are developed yes uh, there are main characters to both uh quentin is the main is the main character in the magician and raz is the main character in psychonauts but both magicians and psychonauts have other supporting characters that are not just props. I really liked that part about the game. There was Lily, who is Raz's love interest, and it's adorable, but she is also a strong-minded young girl. With I no mean, nose. She has no nose, but she can beat you up. She so. is a very potent, Strong, independent student. woman is what she is. <laughs> Ten-year-old woman. So with the instructors of Psychonauts, you learn about their backgrounds, you learn about their histories. You have Lily, you don't learn a ton about her family, but you, she's a strong character in her own right. She's got personality. She has personality. And I think that that is something that's really cool about the game. And I know the magicians too. You have a kind of little circle of characters that are repeated. That it's not yeah. just they pop in and out, but they are there and I feel like they grow and they go through these experiences and you get to kind of know them as they are going through the same time as Quentin is. Definitely. It would be, I, I probably wouldn't have finished the book if it was just Quentin the entire time. And I really did enjoy the other characters more than him at different times. And so that definitely kept me going through some of the book. Curious to see how they keep going, how they relate to Quentin, how they hopefully make him less annoying to me. Uh, and then they have flaws of their own as well, which they delve into many a time. This wraps up our second Game & Read discussion video. We'll be releasing uh, the topic for our next video sometime this week. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for watching.